Hi, my name is Jet. You might also hear people call me Jetty, but this is my first video on this channel. To give you a whole idea of why I'm making this channel and why I'm posting videos is I thought it'd be really fun to show my journey in regards to plants, what I collect, how I take care of them, but also a different journey that I'm starting to kind of get into and that is decorating and using plants in a more artistic way. That is something that has really been piquing my attention and I thought it'd be really fun to kind of record that process and kind of just see how I involve plants in my like, I wouldn't say everyday life, but just how I involve them in my space and how I connect with them and things of that nature. I'm very excited. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. This is also my selfish way of making more content that I wanna see, because I feel like there's a lot of people that have inspired me to do this. Other like content creators and just the way that they do videos and whatnot, and I'm running out of stuff. So I kinda wanna start making some of my own to kinda, I don't know, maybe fill in that little bit of a gap, but I don't know. This is just my fun way of exploring and sharing my personal life with plants and other things of that nature. But to start off today, I am working on a project and that project I'm kind of calling my living wall of art. So my first action of this area is one, I had to sell this really big pothos that I have. I have photos of it, I'll post them on the screen or something. I did end up selling it. I actually sold it to a really good friend, which makes me happy because that means I can kind of still check on it and like make sure it's doing okay. Now that that's gone, I have kind of this blank slate and my first goal and kind of my first plan of action is I really want to have some kind of cool piece that really emphasizes um, talantias or air plants. Higher, maybe about two or so weeks ago from today, I started searching around some more local spots and I ended up finding a really, really cool piece of driftwood that I really enjoyed. And my initial goal was to find a way to mount it on my wall and make it look like it's floating. So that is going to be kind of the whole process. I will 100% admit it, it is extremely rigged. It is not the most beautiful thing, but it still works and it looks pretty freaking good. The biggest thing is I had a couple different videos and kind of some sources of trying to figure out how I should do this. And a lot of them said I should get like these little seesaw hooks or seesaw hacks. I don't know what they're actually called, but it's the stuff you put like behind um, a frame when you want to like kind of hang it up with a nail. So I got some of the smallest ones I could find. <laughs> there probably is smaller, but these are the ones I found. So after I finally got them in, I started to measure them and place them on where I thought would look the best. And I was realizing very quickly that this might be something that wouldn't work, but I had to, you know, I had to give it a shot. I already got the parts and stuff, you know? So I measured it out, I got it all set up, and I started the process of trying to nail them in and immediately could not do it because the nails were so small. Like I was struggling so bad with these small nails. So I decided to kind of go look around and I found a thumbtack. And so I started sticking the thumbtack into one hole and kind of digging it in there. And that kind of helped. It kind of had the nail to rest. So I was like, if I can get the nail to rest and I can hold it down and hit it, that might be enough. I gave that a couple tries and just, it didn't work out. It didn't work out the way I was hoping it was going to work out. Beyond that, I decided to do the other side and kind of thumbtack it and give it a little bit of a try. And same thing, every time I tried to nail in, it would kind of dent the nail or the nail would just kind of pop out. So I wasn't really sure what to do. So after that, I kind of stopped recording because I was trying to mess with it more and figure it out. I ended up doing the other side and that side worked. It's not the prettiest, like I said, but it worked. So then with that happening, it inspired me and I was like, okay, I can make this other side work. So after a bunch of like nailing in and like some really dented up looking nails, it stayed. And I held it up and I gave it some pressure and nothing was moving, so I called it good. Even though I knew it was not probably the best looking, no one's gonna see it. So, you know, it worked. After that, started the next part, which was me finding the perfect spot to kind of mount it and kind of where I wanted to put it. This is kind of, like I said, a part one. There's a couple other things I'm planning on doing with that wall. So it was really hard to not feel like it didn't look good, but I knew once I added other things, it would finish the whole picture. It's kind of like I'm doing a puzzle right now and I got like one third of the puzzle done and I'm looking at it and I'm not really enjoying it, but 
I know if I get the full puzzle done, it'll be good. So I had some other nails and they actually fit perfectly. So I ended up measuring it out. I got everything set up and I ended up just nailing them straight into the wall. The piece of driftwood isn't too big and honestly isn't too heavy so I wasn't too scared especially with two nails on each side so after I kind of did that and placed it on it was looking good I was actually really proud of it and really excited my only problem was is that I wanted it to be more flat versus tilted and I was trying really hard to figure out how could I do that and then I finally had the bright idea of just going through and finding like a part on the bottom and nailing a nail in, but not nailing it too far and having it stick out a little bit. So when I place it on and I lower that bottom part, it that nail will hold it kind of in place and make it look more straight. So after I messed around with that, I had to readjust it a couple times, it worked. And it looked really, really, really good. At least to me, I was extremely proud of it. After the wood was placed on, I decided from there, I wanted to go through and figure out what type of air plants I wanted and kind of think of a layout beforehand. I took a photo and luckily I do work at a nursery so I was able just to kind of go into work and look around and see if there's anything that was really catching my attention and trying to put the puzzle pieces together to make it look as best as I could. After all the shopping and getting a couple little air plants and getting all the pieces that I wanted, it is now time to set it up and decorate it. And we're gonna do that actually right now. So, let's go. Okay, we have made it to the living room. You can kind of see like back there, the driftwood is already like propped up and ready to go. So I went into my work. I, like I said, I got a couple different air plants and I really put in perspective of like what I wanted and which ones I wanted bigger because we had a really good variety where I was working um, these past couple weeks. So I felt like it was a really good time to kind of go in and get some. The first one that I have, I literally still have the little tags on them. Hang on, let me take these off. And the first one that I have here is the Talantia eucinoides. I think that's how it's pronounced. I looked it up and heard it like four or five different times, but I can't like get it to click. But I want to say it's that. It is also known as like the Spanish Spanish moss. I really just like this one because it's very long and I have a feeling it's going to look really cool if I hang it and let it kind of drape down specifically on the piece. I think it will kind of cover some of the bottom area a little bit more and kind of give it its own little like Sorry, you probably can hear like a helicopter. <laughs> I just thought it was a really pretty one. I think it's gonna look really, really good on that piece in general. And I feel like Spanish moss is just pretty easy to take care of in general when it comes to air plants, but maybe that's just me. But yeah, this is the first one that I got. Alrighty, and then the next one that I have is going to be the Talantia bulbosa. This one, I just really, really like how it's small. It doesn't have, I know there's two different types of like air plants in regards of like ones that have like the trichomes and ones that don't or something on that line. I don't know 100%, but I just really like how vivid green this one is. I think it's gonna be kind of a nice pop of color compared to a lot of the other ones where they are a little bit more kind of palish because of those trichomes. So I really like this one. Plus it's kind of just nice and long and kind of just Reminds me of like fingers. And I think that's really, really cool too. So this is the Talantia bulbosa. And then our third air plant here is going to be the Talantia heresy. This one I just also really liked. I love how little it looked on the bottom and like this spot right here is like nice and kind of like flat. So I feel like it's gonna be perfect to like kind of place in and let it kind of just kind of do its thing. But yeah, kind of talking about like how these ones are a little bit more pale in the Spanish moss compared to the bul uh, bulbosa. I just really think this one is super beautiful. I just love how it's kind of sprawling out and there's a lot of cool little divots in that piece of wood and I feel like this is gonna look really, really good with those little divots here. But yeah, Talantia Heresy. The next air plant that I have is the Talantia Streptophilia, Streptophila, something on those lines. Like I said, I'm really bad with the Latin names, but I really like this one because you can kind of see, you can kind of lay it flat and it kind of stands up on its own. And I really just thought that was kind of like a cool look. I also like how the tops really just kind of grow out. We have some more mature ones in where I work at the moment and they are just very, very stunning. The blooms on these ones too are like chef's kiss. But yeah, I just really like this one. I think it's gonna be a really good one where I can kind of just lay flat on some of the more flat parts on there, but yeah. And the last one, but honestly, one of my favorite ones, I've never seen one this massive before, is a Talantia Ionatha. 
This is just one of the biggest clumps I have ever seen. I absolutely adore it. I got this one with my bigger Zero Graphica. I'll take a little video to show where I have that one place. It's too big for the driftwood. But I got these two at the same time because I was just really fascinated in them. And like I said, I just, I've never seen one so big. And this one is beautiful, especially once it gets watered or misted or soaked. It just gets so vibrantly green and the tips have a little bit of like a red tone to them. Just super, super beautiful. Even too with this one, it's pretty big. I think I might try to hang it too. I don't know. I'm going to mess around and see what looks best, but I'm thinking this one's going to get hanged on the other side or, you know, from a different side compared to the Spanish moss. But yeah, this one is stunning. The Talancia Ayanatha. Okay, so now that we are all set there and we've kind of talked about what I'm going to be using, it is time to start putting things where they are gonna go. So I'm gonna start off with the Spanish moss first. I, like I said, I wanna hang it and I'm either thinking here or here, but honestly, I like the idea of it probably coming down right here a little bit more. Only because, like I said, I kind of wanted to fill in this bottom area. Just a little bit more because it is kind of blank. And it's not that I want to put anything to grow above. I could do something like that. And I have in the past. And it looks good. But it would be kind of cool to have it kind of growing down to the sides around. Kind of like taking over the area. I'm going to go and leave it here for now. And put some other stuff on and kind of see how I feel after that. So the next thing I want to go through and do is I think I want to add some of the smaller ones on the top area. The question is, is just how and where I'm going to lay them up. Cut real quick because I just noticed that because it got dark, it was super, super dark. So that was the only difference there. But I kind of like the bulbosa. I, okay, I like the bulbosa there. I kind of like the stephophilia. I believe it's how it's pronounced. I kind of like it there. It almost looks like it's a part of the driftwood. Switch to the side and see if maybe it's a little bit easier to see. Yeah, actually this is probably way better of an idea. I don't know why I didn't do this in the first place. Now it's just finding a home for this one here. This one's a little bit easier to work with in regards of placement, I feel like. I'm just trying to decide on how and where I want to place it. Like I said, it has kind of like a flat side, so I kind of want to use that to my advantage. Oh, oh, sh is this it? What do we think? I think I like this. Hang on, let me let me go take a look. Okay, so the lighting keeps changing, so I, I have to keep adjusting, but I think I really, really like how this is laid out. I think what I'm gonna go through and do now is our last part, which is the giant Ionotha clump. I wanted to hang, so because we already have something down here, and this is kind of protruding from the wood there, I don't wanna go through and hang anything on this side. If anything, I'm gonna attempt on the other side. I also like the idea of making it almost look like it's maybe connected to the driftwood, kind of like how these top ones are. So I think I'm going to attempt to put it to the side and let it kind of hang down, but I don't know. We're gonna mess with it right now. So let me, let me go grab it. Okay, so we have the big clump here. So like I said, I have this little nub and I think I'm gonna try to put it there. I had it already kind of wrapped up because I had this hanging on my little Ikea lamp. Okay, I think I like this, but like I said, I think I want to make it look like it's con like more like connected to the driftwood. So let's go through. I'm going to just wrap this up a little bit more. Okay, so I got it all wrapped up on the bottom part here. So I'm just going to see. I have a feeling it's going to move and that's okay. It's just to see if I can get it a little bit closer to see if I like how that looks. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, yes, I think this is it. I think I like this a lot. Okay, I think this is what it's gonna be. I'm honestly really happy with it. I know it sounds stupid because it's just like putting little things in little places, but that, that's kind of the fun part of it, I feel like, is like kind of figuring it out and making it feel like natural. But yeah, this is, I believe, the finished look. I'm really, really happy with how it came out. I think it looks so much better than having a big old pothos just cover the wall. Not that I don't like the jungle vibe, it's just that, I'm kind of getting burnt out on it and I want my pieces to be just more meaningful and to have conversation to them. That's kind of like my overall goal and I feel like this is a really cool kind of conversation piece. I would be curious of this if I saw this anywhere, especially in someone's like apartment or house, but 
Yeah, like I said, this is gonna be a part one. I do have plans to fill up this other spot up here and I want to fill up this spot as well here. So I have ideas cooking in my brain and I will be going through and recording all of that and kind of getting some stuff going on there. But yeah, this is my air plant piece, my air plant wall, my living wall. I don't know, I don't know what to call it, but I like it, I'm happy with it. That is going to be a wrap on today's video. I appreciate everyone kind of coming in and hanging out. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's anything you would do differently or if there's if this inspired you. I'd love to hear about that as well. Definitely give me a good old sub and a follow and like the video too and share it with all your plant friends as well. But until next time, I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their day or night, whatever time it may be. And I'll catch you later.